All right, moving on to a more happy and positive energy filled video. I'm gonna put my cape on because everybody knows I'm that guy that likes films that everybody hates. And I never actually knew the consensus for this film. And I remember just arbitrarily looking it up out on a whim. And the thought just crossed my mind. What do critics and audiences think about this specific film? And I was really surprised to see that almost all of it was negative. And the film we're going to take a look at today, one that I think is actually pretty good. I like this movie. It's Never Back Down. Now, is this movie perfect? No. Is it a little derivative of The Karate Kid? Kind of. It's kind of got the same premise as The Karate Kid. But The Karate Kid's a classic. Okay, don't get me wrong. I adore The Karate Kid, and I even like The Karate Kid Part 2 quite a bit. Never Back Down is a film that has a lot of ferocity in it. There's a lot of anger in this film. And I think that this movie is criminally underrated. Now, I don't think it's groundbreaking, but I got my notes here. The story is, like I said, can be a little derivative of Karate Kid. Kid loses his father in a car accident, and he's filled with a lot of anger and gets in a lot of fights, and they move to a new town in Florida. And he gets lured into a trap by this girl. And the cast is actually uh, played by Sean Ferris, the main character. Amber Heard, less said about her the better, plays the girl that lures him into this trap. And he gets him into a fight with the school bully played by Cam Gigande and whoops his ass. And he kind of befriends Max, I think is the character's name, played by Evan Peters, who I, I really like Evan Peters. If You probably know him from Kick-Ass and films like that. Uh, X-Men First Class... No, not X-Men First Class, excuse me. I don't know why I was saying X-Men First Class, but yeah, you probably remember him from Kick-Ass, the curly-headed kid. And they get him training mixed martial arts with uh, this world-renowned mixed martial artist and jiu-jitsu expert. Uh, Jean Roca is the name of the character, played by Dejman Hansu. You probably remember him from Blood Diamond and Gladiator. And that's when he learns all the mixed martial arts and goes to fight in this local mixed martial arts tournament called the Beatdown that has been... The, the last the last two cha the last two years in a row the bully played by Cam Gigande wins the tournament and it's actually quite a good movie in my opinion uh, that's the story and I liked a lot of the characters I liked the Sean, uh, the main guy played by Sean Ferris I think he's a very imperfect protagonist he's he has a lot of issues. And he doesn't know how to deal with them. And throughout the film, the film really explores that. How he deals with his issues. And how much the, how cathartic training in the gym is for him. Um, because a lot of the fight, the, the, lot, the, the first fight is egged on and, uh, by the bully. And he goads him into it by trash talking his dead father. Which, it's on after that. If, if I'm ever in that position and somebody says anything like that about... Just, yeah, it's on after that with me. But uh, the, the film really explores that. And it explores that the bully is really a product of his environment. So, like, when he's picking on people at school and he's beating up people in fights and whatnot, he's kind of the badass, the alpha. But when he's around his abusive and strict father, he turns into a little boy. And I think that the film really explores that well. Uh, like I said, he's lured into the trap uh, by Amber Heard's character. I already said, the less said about Amber Heard, the better. Uh, she, I like her as an actress, but as a person, yeah, I think the opposite. <laughs> but uh, The film really does a good job with what it's trying to do. And it's not completely derivative of the Karate Kid, like I said. I think that there's a lot of realism in this story. A lot of the characters have realistic reactions to things. Like I just said, the 
uh, kid, the main guy played by Sean Ferris, Jake. His name is Jake. Uh, he, like I said, gets goaded into a fight by having somebody trash talk his dead father and Cam Gigande's character, Ryan. Ryan's his name. I'm now remembering all the characters' names. Uh, that, that in, with his character and the dad being abusive towards him, that's stuff that really happens. Um, and you would think, watching this movie, that Jake would be more smart when it comes to Amber Heard's character. I think her name, yeah, Baja is her name. you think that Jake would be more smart when it came to Baja because Baja lured him into a fight with uh, Ryan. And you would think, but he's still, he's still in love with her. And you would think, yes, okay, it would be a really stupid idea to pursue this girl. But you also have to remember, he's a teenager still. He's like 17, 17 years old in this movie. And the hormones are still flowing. And teenagers, like when I was a teenager, I didn't make the best decisions. I made a lot of stupid, I did a lot of stupid stuff as a teenager. Um, I'll tell you guys a personal story, actually. Please don't judge me. We were teenagers. I, I don't really care if you guys judge me or not, actually. But uh, we had a video store. Not a real video store, but uh, we were selling movies. And they weren't, like, illegally copied or anything like that. But they were just movies. Like, like I said, not illegally copied. And there happened to come a day where, and this was around school, in the school, rather. Uh, there happened to come a day where we opened up an X-rated section in our little movie store, and we got caught. We got caught. And I think back, man, there's so many ways that I could... There's so many ways I could have went about that now as an adult that would have minimized me getting caught a lot more. But, uh, yeah, like, one well, the point I'm trying to prove was that when I was a teenager, we I did a lot of stupid things. And so I can't really blame Jake's character here for doing something as stupid as pursuing a, uh, Baja, even though she lured him to a fight and got him his ass kicked. And uh, like I said, you look at it, if I was him, I'd never talk to her again, but he's a teenager. Um, the rules of the dojo are no fighting outside the gym under any circumstance. That was in place by Dejman Hansu's character. And Jake goes into train one day in the film while he's angry. And he gets in kind of an altercation with Dejman Hansu, uh, Jean Roca, and they leave. And he goes and ends up, there's a little traffic incident that happens. And it causes Jake to get into a fight with three guys. And the fights in this movie are all, they're awesome, man. They're, uh, the fight with the three guys in the Hummer, that was excellent choreo choreography. And the first fight where uh, Jake gets his ass kicked was very well shot, well choreographed. And even the final fight between Jake and Ryan after the beatdown. And spoiler, um, the beatdown isn't where the fight takes place. What happens is Ryan gets disqualified from the tournament after his fight. He gets kicked out of the tournament. So Jake taps. He just bows down on the floor and taps. Because to him, it's not about winning the beatdown tournament. It's about, it's about fighting Ryan again and getting even with him. And then they have this big, epic fucking fight in the parking lot. And it's awesome. Everything, the emotion... You can see the emotion through these characters' face. And even Baja, who is a who protests the fight the entire time it's going on, not to an obnoxious extent. Obviously, she's going for Jake to win, and Jake obviously does ultimately win the fight against Ryan. Uh, and then at the end of the film, they kind of gain a new respect for one another. They kind of have this scene where they kind of smile and nod at, at each other signifying that they have a newfound respect for one another, that Jake is able to whip Ryan's ass after going through lots of extensive training. And, like I said, you know, Jake breaks the rules and gets kicked out of the gym, and then he has to beg. He goes into a grocery store and begs Dejman Hansu to come back into the gym because he broke the rules. And I don't think... 
I think De yeah, Dejmon let him slide one time, but he did. I don't. It doesn't ever say if it let him, if they let him slide another time. But uh, this movie does have issues, though. I do feel the the Sean Ferris and Amber Heard love story does feel a little forced. Um, honestly, like I said, I wouldn't have even went for Amber Heard's character because she could be kind of a bitch in this movie. She's very unlikable, and the love story is really forced. That is definitely one of the flaws with the film. Um, that's really the only flaw I did have with the film is the love story. They were pushing the love story a little too much. But other than that, Never Back Down is actually a fun little watch. And I think it's actually worth, uh, how long is the movie? It's 113 minutes. It's it does it, it's paced very well as well. And it's also got a good uh, soundtrack. I mean, you got like Soja Boy and whatnot, which is not really my thing at all but then you got bands that i did used to listen to around that time like 12 stones and rise against like 12 stones got big in the beginning of the 2010s and rise against still remains one of my favorite bands today um just yeah never back down is a really good movie and i think that it deserves more love than it gets it gets a lot of shit from people i've i've actually enjoyed the sequel never back down too when it stars michael jai white and it's got Todd Duffy, and it's even got a... There's even a scene where Leota Machida is in the movie for a little bit, too, the UFC guy. Um, well, now I think he's in Bellator. But uh, Never Back Down is definitely a franchise. It's a franchise now, but the first film is definitely the best in the franchise, and I did enjoy the second one quite a bit, too. The acting's a little shit in the second one, but the acting in this movie is all really good from everybody. So definitely, I would... If you're into these kind of movies, if you're into... If I'm kind of a sucker for these like teenage like high school love school uh, love story movies, but I really recommend Never Back Down just to watch it once and see if you like it. So that's gonna be it. I probably know this was a shitty video. I'm kind of just coming off doing a really anger filled video, so that's why I'm a little all over the place. But uh, what did you guys think the video? What do you guys think? Have you seen Never Back Down? If not. If not, I really suggest you guys watch it. It's nothing, like, amazing. Like, it's not Shawshank Redemption or anything. But uh, definitely check. I don't even know if... I wouldn't even put it in the quality as The Karate Kid because The Karate Kid's a classic. But really check out Never Back Down if you like The Karate Kid or if you like Fight Club. Uh, there are some similarities to Fight Club as well. But it doesn't feel so derivative of those films to the point where it feels like it's ripping it off. But... Now, like I said, would you guys think the video, like if you like, hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you guys for watching, and I'm out. Peace.